here I'm going to present to you uh, our work on the formation of circles in uh, co-authorship networks. So at the very outset, I would like to uh, point out that by circles, here we mean social circles as the ones that you see in Google+. So uh, this is a joint work with two, two students, uh, Tonmay Chakraborty and uh, Shikhar Patranobish, and one of my colleagues, Pavan Goel. So um, as you see, I have put the cover page photo for these people, and at least two of my co-authors already reflect some circles that they are associated to. So Shikhar is very much keen on dramatics, while Pavan is like a uh, passionate follower of ISKCON. OK, so uh, like uh, f the t from the time I have been presenting this work, the first question that comes up is like how to define a circle. So it's basically like, so it takes me back to the definition of community. So there is no hard and fast definition of communities. As such, there is also no hard and fast definition of circles. It's like uh, there, there is a philosophy in which we try to quantify here. So the idea is that there is an ego sitting here that's in the co-authorship network, and there are these alters of this ego, and this ego might have alters which might be his co-authors from an institute, from a certain institute, might be co-authors having working in networking research area, might be co-authors like from the same institute as you. So these like are kind of like shallow definition of circles that we are talking of here. Okay, if we are still not impressed, this is one of the final results of uh, this works, but I wanted to present it in the beginning so that I could give you enough motivation. So we see here there are three authors out here, and these are like kind of the circles that they have. So, and there are clear distinctions between the author one and the author three. Author three. So the author one is kind of working in 1997 to 2000, he's working in data mining. Then in 2000 to 2003, he has slowly migrated to machine learning and then to IR in 2003 to 2008. Whereas the author three is like kind of more haphazard. And uh, we kind of saw that like for more or, more or less 90 to 95 percent of our data, this is what is the observation. So mostly the high impact or highly cited authors behave in this way. So they behave in a scattergather fashion. So you have like on their entire lifetime, they work on many different fields, but at one particular point in time, they sample out one field and concentratedly work on that. So that's how they behave. And this behavior is very, very different for the low cited authors. Okay, I think we have enough motivation to detect circles now. So uh, this paper has two objectives. One is to have device an unsupervised method to detect circles, and then to identify whether this detection could be any way meaningful by doing some sort of an authorship, co-authorship prediction in future. So it's basically a standard form of link prediction. Okay, so the basic hypothesis that we kind of follow is that so uh, while we do the uh, circle detection, we do not take the, we pretend that we do not have the link information. It's only from the author profile that we create and we check the similarity of these profiles and then slowly through iterative, pro through an iterative process, we come up to, land up to uh, the detection of circles. And the basic hypothesis is that authors who have similar profiles should be in the same circle. Authors who have different profiles should be in this similar circle. And uh, there are a few other things like it's possible to level one circle by some meaningful feature and like authors like maybe belonging to multiple circles so, so circles might overlap and there might be authors in these overlapping circles. Okay. So coming to the formulation of the problem, so what we have at our disposal is for every node V in the co-authorship network, we have an n-dimensional profile vector say from F1 to Fn, and where I is, so if IV is the ith feature vector for the uh, vertex V. So, and then we define a simple, simple Euclidean distance between two uh, uh, vector spaces, and for us, a set of circles is defined as C cup, kappa by C1 to Ck, this is a set, and you can, similarly, you can define the distance between a particular circle and the one single node that is defined as, so this is like the similar concept of average linkage and single link, single linkage that you have in hierarchical clustering. So it's basically the average distance of that node Y from the 
rest of the members in the circle. And similarity is just the reciprocal of the distances and there is actually with every similarity we associated a similarity threshold, we will come to that in a moment. So now coming to devising an algorithm which can kind of give us this circles nicely. So, so the, the ones that are in green is what I favor, the ones that are in red is that uh, we should disfavor. So beta 1 x y is like a function, is a, if, so we call this a closeness estimator. So is a function between x and y, if so it is a similarity, it tries, tries to find out like if x and y are already part of a circle, then what is the similarity between them and whether this, this crosses a threshold. Similarly, so this is what, what I am trying to do is that if this, this value is high, if x and y share common circles with high threshold, if there are two guys who are part of many circles with very high thresholds, then they should remain together, they should be in the same circle. Whereas this is something that I disfavor, that is this is high if x and y do not share similar circles but have very high thresholds. So they have a high similarity threshold but they are not coming in the same circle. So this is something we should disfavor. So and then jointly using this two we formulate beta x y which is like an exponential of the square of square difference of these two values. So the basic idea of the closeness estimator is that so believe me all the maths is there in the uh, paper you can go back and follow it and that is why the paper got accepted probably. So the closeness as estimator is like increases with the increase in the number and the threshold values of the common circles. So it is basically both the number and the threshold values both are important. Okay. So now the age formation probability. So from those beta values we will now compute probabilities. So it is pretty straightforward. So like we assume that the probability that there is exists an age between x and y is, is defined as beta x y by 1 plus beta x y which is like an advanced smoothing. So and this is the probability that there is no edge and now we from there we map it into a log likelihood problem. So it is basically the product of the probability of having an edge between a pair of nodes okay, with the probability that they do not have an edge between them. So and from there we have a log likelihood mapped and then we try to detect circles based on this optimization function. So it is basically a simple uh, simulated aniline kind of an approach. So our assumptions are that for so the circles at each time step or each iteration of the algorithm is defined by this set C1, T2, CKT and then with each of them there is a threshold associated. So mm, here what I do is basically every step I try to, I have to compute these two functions, add circle and remove circle. So what these two functions try to do is that to how many circles should I add y in this step and from how many circles should I remove y. So this C check that this should be bounded by the there are as many circles as y is not part of you can only add y to them and as many circles as y is part of you can remove from them. So that those are bounded by these two constant values and what we ensure is that the circle membership of y is undisturbed we try to keep it undisturbed if it is already part of many circles. Okay. So we, we disfavor more it being part of more circles so that we do not land up into you know isolated islands. So with this now the update tools are very simple so you add mm, y to add circle many randomly selected circles similarly you remove y from uh, remove circle many randomly selected circles and then you do some updating uh, of the thresholds. So what you do is that after this step you set the threshold of the next step to be the minimum of of the all the thresholds in the inside that circle and if the threshold if if this threshold that you have set is less, less than an empirically set threshold we will come to see when we do a, when we present empirical results we will see what these values are then we will discard that circle. So and then finally if the log likelihood of the new circles is more than the log likelihood of the earlier circles then we accept the result otherwise we, we stop there. So mm, uh, for experiments we had uh, collected data from the Microsoft academic search 
consists of two, two, two million uh, kind of computer science papers with like 82,000 authors. It's a co-authorship network that we form from them and each author in this network is a ego separately. So for the uh, similarity of profiles, we have a bunch of features like number of citations re re received, normalized number of citations, normalized ACE index, etc. Then we have certain egocentric properties like fraction of our papers co-authored with the ego in different decades, fields, normalized. Now, so we had the field information also like which primary area is does, does a paper belong to like natural language processing, data science and things like that. So uh, interestingly, so the, uh, the basic empirics that allowed us to forward our experiments is this. What we see here is the profile similarity on the x-axis and on the y-axis we see the probability that there is an edge between the two nodes with that same profile similarity. So as the profile similarity rises, there is a higher probability that there is an edge between the two nodes, okay, two author nodes. But at the same time, what you see here is the distribution of the edges. So we, what we see here is that there are very few people who have very high profile similarity. So this is the number of edges. So in this bucket, so it's like 0.5 to 0.75, in this bucket actually a lot, the largest number of edges fall. So most of the authors have this kind of a profile similarity like 0.55 to 0.75, whereas there are very few who have very high similarity. Okay, so then, uh, so we had to do some sort of an evaluation of the circles and we do not have ground truth for this. So nobody has given us like uh, what, what should be a proper ground truth. So what we do is like first we do an intrinsic evaluation where, so circles are like communities, you can uh, assume them to be communities and then you have uh, the over modularity functions and the, since it's an overlapping uh, kind of a structure, so we use overlapping modularity detection and for this, so this is the TL, the threshold that we vary and we see that the best modularity is obtained at somewhere around 0.2. And at that 0.2, this is the modularity value for the different methods. So like the general overlapping algorithms, so if we apply them blindly on this network and find out the circles, this would be the uh, kind of uh, uh, modularity values. Whereas, so there was an earlier method based on coordinate ascent, which kind of achieves a modularity of 0.64, which is pretty decent, and then our method kind of outperforms all of these. So there are, here are some uh, interesting observations, like uh, we tried to see some more statistic related to um, the circles. So as the number of citations increase, what we see is that people who have larger number of citations tend to have more number of cir circles in their neighborhood. Again, people who have uh, so people who have uh, so people who have la higher citations have larger size size circles. Similarly, we have many such interesting properties. One interesting property is this one: is that what is the clickishness? So we may we measure the density of the circles, and we see that people usually who have very high citations tend to have a high de density of uh, edge density or clickishness. So these are like, you can assume that these are like very low citation people, they, it's like more or less noise. This part is kind of noise. So if you consider like people having more than 100 citations, and if you see the trend, it's like people having larger citations tend to have more clickish, more denser circles. Okay, so, so then like this was uh, one part of the study, and the other part was like we wanted to have a more concrete evaluation. So what we tried to do was we tried to include this circle information in standard link prediction algorithms. So the idea is that like given to authors, can we predict at a later time point whether these two authors will collaborate, will co-author a paper or not. So there are standard models like logistic regression and supervised random walk. So they use a lot of features, already standard features like number of citations received, the, uh, the age index of the author, uh, number of co-authors, etc. some edge level features like fraction of papers co-authored by X and Y over some decades, normalized number of common co-authors, etc., etc. So these are like the normal features that these kind of link prediction algorithms would use. So what we do is like 
we have different training data sets like uh, we take data till 1995 and then we report our accuracies from 96 to 99, then we take data till uh, 2000 and report accuracies 2000, 2004 and so on. And we use two metrics, the area under the ROC curve and the precision at 20. So using these two, these are some of the nice results that we get. So NE means we have only the node and the edge features. NEB means we have the node feature, the edge feature, and the circle feature. That is whether two people are part of the same circle. I, remember that, recall that we have not used the link information in the earlier time stage. So we have just used, induced the circles from their profile similarities. So, and we are now seeing that whether such profile similarities could lead to links. And what we see is that, and then another advancement on that, so NEB plus also, we all look into the number of circles that two authors are part of. So, the number of circles they co-occur. Okay. So, given all this, what we see is that so the circ is our method. It beats kind of all the methods, and it's much better than just using nodes, edges, or nodes and edges. And it's like giving ten percent, kind of ten percent improvement. And like that is true for all the different models: uh, linear regression, supervised random walks, and I guess this will hold true for other models also. Okay. So, yeah. So, we don't only work, we also party. So, this is like a small snapshot of our group. So, all the code and data are available here. So, if you are interested, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Is there time for a question? So, I was wondering if you compared to the other um, community detection methods. What is the particular difference in the method that you have used? Which yeah, one so would you put forward? Yeah, so the point is like, as I was telling you about this coordinate ascent method. So in that paper, the authors claim that in this egocentric networks, you have very less link information. Mm -hmm. And in order to do a full-fledged community detection, you really need to have nice link information there. So in such cases, it's better to use topic models like latent models, mm -hmm. like LDA kind of things. And that's why we came up with this kind of a method where we don't need the link information at all. But still we have an idea of the community space mm -hmm. using the similarity between, uh, like the using the similarity space of the authors. And did you compare it to pure topic modeling? Uh, yeah, we compared to the co coordinate ascent method, which is kind of. Okay, that was for. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't know that method. Yeah, that I was like Latin that was proposed by Yuri, I think. Yuri and his things. yeah, okay. that was pro proposed by Yuri and his uh, co-authors in NIPS 2012. Okay. Yeah. There is another question. Great talk, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I think you already answered it, but ju just in case, because it's an important problem. So. What is the conclusion to be a famous uh, quote or what do I need to do? Uh, yes, so you have to behave like in a scatter gather fashion. So that was like probably the best thing that I found from this study is like I always try ask my students that try to find out patterns which are like pretty interesting and not like simply statistically showing like 100% accuracy. So that is something like uh, I would kind of stress. So uh, if you behave like in this kind of a scatter gather method, so at one point in time, you are working on one single idea or one single topic, and then like slowly migrate from that topic to another topic. But then over your lifespan, you can work on many different topics. But at one point in time, concentrate on one single topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let's thank the speaker again.